All right, since this is college football and this is y'all's world, I'm going to be kind of the timekeeper here, but we're going to let Malpal kind of take the take the helm here in running this segment. So it's time for our 2021 uh, Rice football postmortem. So with that, we turn the hooting over to the lady at the computer. Hoot, hoot. Now, we do these in a, s- a different order every single year. This is my first year doing these postmortems, so I decided that we're going to kind of go from the ground up. Now, in our rankings... Rice is second to last, but since we'll have Ish on next week, and of course Ish is a known Texas State graduate, we'll do Texas State next week instead. Um, But we'll go ahead and start off with our offensive grade. Now, we kind of talked about the offense beforehand a little bit, um, and we're going to give them a C, an overall grade of C. Craig, you want to take it away? Yeah, I mean, they, they only scored 21.5 points a game. They averaged under four yards a rush. You know, as a team, they only had one runner, average over four yards a rush. So it, it was a tough year for Rice. Now, I have a hard time grading Rice's offense negatively because that's an institution that's going to have a hard time recruiting, like, playmakers. Right. You know, they're, they're never going to have that explosive offense or score 40 points. Uh, but Jake Bailey was really good. Uh, they just didn't have any consistency from the quarterback. They started three different quarterbacks over their first four games because of injuries, right. and that kind of trickled throughout the year. Sometimes it was McCaffrey. Sometimes it was Green. Jake Constantine uh, played really well down the stretch. So I thought the offense played better the last month of the year because they finally got some consistency, and they finally had a quarterback that yeah, was able to play yeah. multiple games. Uh, but a really tough start uh, on that side of the ball, and they're going to have to get better at the offensive line because at Rice, you need to run the football. Mm-hmm. You're, uh-huh. just, you're just not going to spread the ball out and no. have all these wide receivers and this is not how Rice is going to be able to recruit. You have to be able to run the football. The best Rice teams can run the football, and this one just didn't really. Ari Broussard had a good year, but other than that, uh, it was a pretty tough go mm-hmm. offensive line wise and then the running game. Yeah, I was going to say the offensive line is where I was most disappointed because it's one of those things. Sometimes they, they do a pretty good job. I mean, they always have good sides up front mm-hmm. and everything like that, but it's never. I, they just it was awful yeah. <laughs> it was really bad I guess too real fast we should have I should have done this from the beginning but Rice this season had a, a record of four and eight um, oh, in yes. Mike Bloomgren's first year so he, he's he gone since 2018 two and 11 three and nine two and three in that just a wild rough. season last year Let's and go. then four and eight so technically the most wins under Bloomgren so far and I'm yeah. curious how much last year hurt Rice this year yeah you know like I'm mean, because everybody had a weird season last year but Rice only played five games mm-hmm. right and so uh, how much did that impact kind of what they were doing along the offensive line, defensive line? Was that just kind of a lost year even behind the scenes in the weight room? Um, so, yeah, just a, a tough go for Rice offensively this year because of injuries and consistency. And they had a lot of penalties, too. Oh, for, yeah. For yeah. Rice team. They averaged like 7.4 penalties a game, something like that. So a lot of penalties for Rice this year. It was just a weird year. But then you look at the record, they were two overtime losses away from being 6-6. Six and six and Exactly. Oh, I was – yeah, so. I was going to say, I mean, they – Almost beat North Texas in overtime. Yeah, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte. I think Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. they I, that final score to that Arkansas game. It was like thirty-eight to seventeen. But I mean, it was close for yeah, a while, was right? They really played going in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they, they beat played hard and nine they, and four UAB. I was going to say mean, that was my next one. They beat yeah. UAB, so that's why I decided to give them an overall grading of a C rather than a D because I think they played as hard as they could have. You know, switching between four different quarterbacks that can be kind of difficult. So. With that being said, we'll go ahead and move on to our defensive grade of the season, and we have decided to give them a a D because it's just not good. It was not good. To me, that was the most important or the most disappointing part of Rice's football. Like what we talked about earlier, I don't expect Rice to have this explosive offense, Mm -mm. but I expect them to play solid, fundamental, sound defense, and they just didn't do that this year. They Gave up 36.17 points per game, yeah. which is insane. Jeez. The red zone defense is where it's really bad. So the opponents got into the red zone 59 times against Rice. Mm-hmm. They scored 50 of those times. Ugh. I mean, that's, that's Not that's, a math major, that but is not good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, conversely, Rice only got into the red zone 38 times. Right. And so it, it was just one of those things where you add in the turnovers, you add in the offense maybe not being as consistent as they needed to be. And the defense, really, they were just atrocious. They mm-hmm. just were not very good defensively. And that's where Rice needs to be good. They should be good, like you said, along the offensive line. They should be able to run the football. And they should play, like, sound defense. They're mm-hmm. not going to have the athletes maybe that everybody else has. But they should play fundamental sound defense. And they, they didn't do that throughout the year. Well, right. and you always take a look at this, and it's one of those things. You say, okay, well, they're spending a ton of time out there on the field because the offense isn't getting anything going, mm-hmm. which, yes, inherently is true but on the other side of that I mean from the get-go it doesn't 
you know, that that starts becoming an excuse in the second half. Once you've been out there for a long time, once you're tired, this was right off the start. I mean, it was people torching them down low. They couldn't stop the run defense or they didn't have any run defense. They didn't have any help in the backfield. And that's where it seems like they always struggle a little bit. They need to have some line. They need to recruit heavy on the linebacker position because they really, really need the help up front. Yeah. And I'm thinking if this defense was just a little bit better that, yeah, they could have that six and six record, Absolutely. you know, and it's, it's, that's really sad. I mean, if they if they averaged if they gave up twenty eight points a game, mm-hmm. they'd uh-huh. be six and six, seven and five. Um, if you look at their schedule, now even down the stretch, they gave up over thirty points to the last seven games of the season. Like so, you give up fifty eight to Texas, that's understandable. Mm-hmm. Right, you give up forty four to Houston, and nobody's going to fault you for that. But in conference USA games down the stretch, they gave up over thirty in seven of the last seven games, and so uh, just not not a good showing uh, for Rice defensively. And that that's the part that needs to improve the most. And that's with Elijah Garcia being really good. Right. Yeah. He was a first team all conference USA guy. He Mm -hmm. was on our all state team uh, for Dave Campbell's Elijah Garcia was really good and they still couldn't really figure out what to do and how to get stops when they needed to. And that's how you lose close games when you can't get off the field. uh, You just you're just not going to win those close games. And they weren't able to do that. Yeah. We're going to move on to our team MVP. We've already mentioned his name once, but we'll mention it again. Jake Bailey, the wide receiver. And I like this guy, too, because we've talked about it before. They had a they just had so much inconsistency at that quarterback position. But that one he he was the kind of the constant out of all of them. You know, no matter who you put at that quarterback position, he was able to perform. And I think that's a big reason why we're giving Jake Bailey the team MVP. I have I have a stat for you. Rice completed 204 passes this year, Mm -hmm. 56 of them to Jake Bailey. (laughs) So he accounted for about 27% of of every reception. And and that just goes to show how, like, one-dimensional Rice was. Right. Right. They just – they just didn't have the plethora of weapons that you need in a modern offense. You can't just have one wide receiver, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to blanket coverage. You can double guys. You can take somebody away um, when there's only one guy. They, they're going to have to find more weapons uh, next year. But the good news for Rice is Bailey's a sophomore, uh, and he's going to be good for the next couple of years. Right, and so that goes exactly back to what you were saying about just the consistency of the quarterback position because when they when Jake Constantine was healthy and they finally looked like they were getting a little momentum going there, that is a really good duo that you mm-hmm. can use, you can score with it. So it's like, man, there was so many that fell apart between those two not being able to be on the field enough together Yeah, and the lack of running. Right, right. Well... We'll go ahead and move on to our last part of our postmortems, and that's going to be the expectations that we have for this Rice program heading into the 2022 season. Uh, they've already signed 11 guys during the early signing period. Um, do you have any known targets that you know of that are going to maybe sign when National Signing Day comes around? Uh, I think that's just gotten so hard. Mm-hmm. It's right? hard to recruit down there, it, yeah. It's hard, it's hard to recruit, and – other teams can go and address needs through the transfer portal. Uh-huh. Well, Rice has a really hard time going into the transfer portal because who can transfer to Rice? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, Academically speaking, you have to – there right. are regulations. Like right. Stanford got uh, a transfer signee today to commit from, from OU, and that's only the third transfer to Stanford in David Shaw's whole history wow. at Stanford. And Rice is similar to that mm-hmm. academics-wise. And so you just – you can't go into the transfer portal and be like, oh, you didn't work out here? Well, come to Rice and play. Right. Because you just – you're not going to get in, most likely. Right. And so I do think it's – it's hard to project Rice, maybe harder than, than the other schools because you just don't know who they can get and who they can go sign. But they do have a pretty young roster. Only one of their offensive mm-hmm. linemen was a senior. Like we just talked about Jake Bailey, a sophomore. Wiley Green, who I think is their best quarterback talent-wise on the roster, uh, will be back. And if he can stay healthy, I think that gives them an added dimension there. And you hope that defense grows up. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And so with with Rice, we should never have these expectations of like ten win seasons, conference USA championship. Mm-hmm. Get get to six wins, right? Right. right. Make bowl, a bowl. That's game. the starting get point. To bowl yeah. Eligibility, mm-hmm. and then the recruiting picks up. Then you get some more transfers. Then all that kind of starts coming into play. So I think right. Bloomgren, he just needs to get to six wins, and if he can keep his team healthy, they can improve defensively, and they can lower on the uh, the penalties and, and the mistakes on special teams. I think Rice could be a team that gets to six wins. They're just going to have mm-hmm. to do it in conference USA play because they're always going to lose three out of their four out of conference games right, right. and, and they, they always schedule hard i was gonna say they is the schedule only, hard mcneese is really the only winnable game before conference so now you're asking the team to go five and three in conference and that's that's a tough ask mm-hmm. yeah right well and 
I love that you brought up the fact earlier when we were talking about, obviously, the the two and three season was very wild. If you take a look back at the end of that three and nine season, those last three wins, I don't know if y'all remember, were the last three games of the season. Mm -hmm. Rice, technically, heading into 2020, was the hottest team in Texas on a three-game win streak, Mm -hmm. which is wild to think about right but you get that in Bloom's second year and then the craziness happens in the third year and this is a program that everyone has anyone that comes in has to build it up you can't you're not walking into this cushy plush job you're always walking into the very bottom of the barrel and trying to get something out of it so the fact that in year four after a true off season with a bunch of young players that they were able to come in and win four games yes one of them's over Texas Southern which is a team that has turned into around shout out to our guy Mm -hmm. Andrew Body regardless um it's one of those things a a win more each year is that's a realistic goal you can't you can't overhype it you can't oversell it Mm -hmm. just keep adding one more year until you get to that bowl eligible rice team and with AAC coming up in the in the greater future you're right they're yeah next year's big for them I think it's also big for Bloom do you think he's on the hot seat after next year yeah, I mean, I I think he is if he wins three or four games and, and they don't they don't improve a little bit. But like, what do you expect at Rice? Like, I that's what I have a hard time mm-hmm. with that job is like right. I don't know what the expectation expectations are supposed to be. I don't know if the admin, the alumni base, I don't know if they've ever bought all in to what football can do for the university. So you're just kind of there on your own trying to make things work. I do think six wins is attainable. Like we we were talking about earlier, they beat UAB. They lost a couple games in overtime. Like they're right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's not a huge separation. Maybe there is between the top of Conference USA and the bottom. Right. But the middle of Conference USA and the bottom of Conference USA is the same thing. Mm-hmm. And so I think you, you Rice could do what like North Texas did this year, right? Where they yeah they start off slow, probably one and four, one and five in that way. But if they can get hot at the end of the year, um, they can do pretty well. And I, I just don't know. I don't know how to judge Bloomgren's job and how well he's done or how well he hasn't done because I don't know what support you get at Rice mm-hmm. and like what the upside could possibly be even be. I, winning eight games a year at Rice just seems like a fantasy to me. Yeah, right. So it's hard for me to be as hard on a coach at Rice as I maybe would be at one at UTSA or Texas State. Even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because at that point, yeah, I mean, you got to win almost every conference game if you're going to go eight and four or nine and three and like. Obviously, you see Conference USA, that seems a little hard. Well, especially now that they're moving into the AAC, that's going to be even harder Mm -hmm. to obtain that goal. I do have one last question before we let you go here. Um, Do you think, and this is totally kind of off the rails a little bit, but do you think that the success that UTEP had this year, and UTEP and Rice have always been, I mean, super comparable. Uh You look at them, you say the same thing of, well, is Dana Dimmel's job really on the line, blah, blah, blah. They go out there and they have an unbelievable season this year. Do you think that does start to put maybe a little bit of added pressure of saying, well, shoot, we went from like last to now we're like really last in Texas? Mm -hmm. For sure. Like I do think Rice has always kind of had a little bit of a leg up on UTEP. And so that kept you from being like bottom of the barrel, Mm -hmm. right? But yeah, if UTEP is improving, UTSA is winning conference championships, North Texas made a bowl game, when all your peers Mm -hmm. are starting to improve and do better, I think it's natural to look at your school and go, well, look, UTSA's figured it out. If they Uh can do it, if they can do it in El Paso, we can do it in Houston. Right. Right. And so I I do think there is that natural tendency of like you compare yourself to your peers. And I think those are better measuring marks than maybe we look at in the state. Like Rice is never going to be Baylor. No. Mm-hmm. Or Texas Tech even, or, or Texas or whatever. But they can be UTEP. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I do think that is an important measuring stick where you need to be – you need to keep up with your peers. And if they're all improving around you, then you not improving is much more noticeable right. than if they're also yep. not improving. Yep. So Absolutely. if the state of Texas is going to get better at, like, that level, right, if, if the Conference USA teams in the state are all getting better, that does put an emphasis on Rice to also improve and to, to not have the excuses that maybe we've given them in the past. Mm-hmm. So. Completely agree. Anything else, Mal Pal? No, that was it, I think. That All right. Good. Well, there we Breakdown. go. Our 2021, the first of the 12 college football postmortems that we'll do. We'll continue to do them week in and week out. But we're going to start off there with the Rice Owls hoot hoot. Craven, thanks for joining us, bud. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks <laughs> for being here. Hey, thanks for watching this clip here on YouTube. If you like this kind of stuff and you want more of it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, you can watch us live every weekday at noon at TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, or here on YouTube. And if you want more of the best coverage of football in the state of Texas, check out TexasFootball.com and become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football Insider at TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.